Now, while I was working on the Trap Team video earlier last week, I began to notice another one of the many, many, many patterns within this franchise. And it all starts with this guy right here, Rocky Roll. Now, it's quite obvious that Rocky Roll is, well, made out of rocks. And that's when I began to start digging around, and apparently rocks are just everywhere in the Skylanders group. And I'm not talking about your average garden variety rock that you see in damn near every level. No, no, no. I am talking about rock golems and rock people. There's a bunch of them everywhere, and there was even a boss fight with one that was separate from the Skylanders in a previous game. It was either SSA or Giant, I just don't remember. But I think that these are some of the characters that I feel the strongest about. Some of these Skylanders, even though I don't own most of them, have some of the most intriguing lore in the franchise, and I have personal beef with one of these characters. So without any more stalling, let's get into the many stone warriors of Skyland. But to make things simple, Let's start out with the little guys I mentioned earlier. <laughs> Roll with it. Now, when it comes to Skylanders, Rocky Roll is one of those rare instances where there are actually two different beings existing as one Skylander. Rocky, the guy on top being a creature known as a rock digger, and Roll, the guy on the bottom, being a sentient boulder. But with that out the way, let's get into their history. Rocky was a rock digger who wanted to make a difference in the world, and his friend Roll was a living boulder who wanted to explore it. The two knowing each other ever since they met each other in mining school, and ever since then, the two had one major goal to journey to the top of Peak's Peak. The peak was said to reveal one's identity, and the two would begin to drift apart, not seeing each other for many years until they eventually found each other on the path of the mountain. The two would slowly but surely rekindle their relationship on the journey to the top, and they would slowly but surely realize what their destinies were, explore the world together as friends, as Rocky Roll. The two would go on many adventures and journeys together before they would eventually go on to coincidentally meet Eon, who would notice the special bond the two had, and would ask both of them to become a Skylander, and the two took the deal. It was pretty much a win-win for the two, as Rocky could make a difference like he always wanted to when he was younger, and Roll could explore the world as a hero, and the two would go on to help the Trap Team in the Light in the Dark comic book. But with that out the way, let's get into talking about this. Now, when it comes to Skylanders as an organization, they are extremely strange with how recruitment works. I know that the main reason for this is that the people at Toys for Bob and Vicarious Visions need to make toys, but it's just strange how it works in-universe. These two raise the good question of if these two exist as separate Skylanders or one. And you could also ask the same question for Fright Rider. Is Ozzy also a Skylander, or is he just viewed as a pet by the other Skylanders? Like, are Rock and Roll able to work as Skylanders independently, or are they kinda just forced to work together? I also wonder why they were even made Skylanders in the first place. Like, I know these two in-game are pretty good fighters, but Eon recruited them because of how good their friendship was. This makes me wonder if Skylanders take on different roles within the group outside of fighting evil, like Sprocket being a mechanic who repairs vehicles and other gadgets as an example. If that's the case, these two probably would be the Skylanders' relationship support units due to how well theirs is, but that's pretty far-fetched even for me. But with that out the way, let's get on to the next Skylander of today. When it comes to Skylanders and their gameplay, Doomstone is one of the most well-regarded SWAT Force members who came from that game, many people in the community absolutely loving him. But is his story just as good? Well, let's find out. Doomstone was carved from the strongest and purest stone in all of Skylands, then magically brought to life by a wizard. He wasn't really made for a specific purpose or to be a warrior, but instead, he was brought to life because the wizard was lazy and needed someone to carry things around for him and do stuff around the castle. What is up with Skylands magicians taking the most extreme methods to get something done, like bringing someone to life out the purest stone in all of Skylands because you're too lazy to do it yourself, or dragging someone from another dimension to play one of the simplest board games in all of existence, like... Why not just hire someone at that point? Even though I questioned the wizard's methods, Doomstone happily helped, and in his spare time, he would learn the ancient ways of stone fighting just in case he ever needed to protect the wizard, who would become a father figure to him. Sure enough, the time to protect the wizard came when he was kidnapped by his evil twin brother in order to steal his spells for himself, and Doomstone wasted no time in using the skills he learned to save his master. Afterwards, the wizard knew that Doomstone had a greater calling and decided to introduce his creation to Master Eon, who would make him a Skylander. Now, when it comes to Doomstone, I think he's one of the most interesting Skylanders to my knowledge. Not because of his character, but how life itself works in Skylands. It seems like anything and everything can be brought to life in Skylands with a little bit of magic. 
which makes me wonder if there's anyone in the magic element that was brought to life by it. And speak of which, are there any rules to like, how this works? Can I turn a normal rock into a living being like a pet, and if so, does it come pre-packaged with its own limbs or do I have to make them? And if I have to do that, would it just roll around and follow me everywhere? How do I make it speak? Does it come pre-packaged or do I have to make that as well? Or do I have to specifically say in the spell that I want my creature to speak? But me hyper-analyzing a game meant for 12 year olds aside, let's talk about the final Skylander of today. The beam is supreme. When it comes to Skylanders, I have disliked many of them over the years. Sprocket for being downright useless, Gorilla Drilla for having one of the most unfun primary attacks I've ever used, but nothing compares to my dislike of Prism Break. But I will get into that later. Right now, we're here to talk about his lore. Before Prism Break ever had thoughts of joining the Skylanders, he was a fearsome rock golem who resided in a dark and dangerous cave that he called his home. But embedded in the walls of the cave were an assortment of gems, jewels, and other minerals that many miners couldn't resist getting their hands on. The reason this is is because a dragon used to reside there, but it's never really said why the dragon left the caverns without taking its gold with it. But what does matter is that the dragon left it there. Many miners went into the caves hoping to make a fortune, but only a few came out of them unscathed. Those who could still speak after their experience telling stories of blood-curdling screams, trash machinery, and ghastly growls that rang out from the depths of the caves. I'm not even making that up, that is actually what the wiki says. Due to the many harrowing stories, less and less miners would show up until eventually, no one showed up anymore. And finally, Prism Break was allowed to relax and take a nap that lasted a century, so he would miss out on a ton of stuff. One of these things being the cavern falling on top of him. Over a hundred years later, a new generation of Mabu miners would venture into the caves and unintentionally wake Prism Break from his slumber. The bio saying that they struck him in a place that he'd rather not mention, so uh... Take that as you will. He would make an appearance in Spyro vs. the Mega Monsters where he would basically make a phone call to Eon, and he would appear in Stump Smash vs. the Bone Dragon when he was frozen for half of it, and only unfrozen when the Bone Dragon agreed to unfreeze him, along with everyone else. Alright, so with that out the way, I'd like to explain why I dislike this Skylander so much. It isn't his gameplay, it isn't the story, it isn't even his design. But it's his lost potential. Prism Break has by far one of the best designs out of all the other Skylanders in the Earth element, almost embodying it to a T, becoming one of, if not its only poster boy, getting a Light Core variant that is probably the best out of all of them, only to be one of the most lackluster Skylanders of all time. Call that a hot take if you want to, but he's just one of the most unfun Skylanders I've ever played as. His main attack is just too reliant on his secondary. But with that over and done with, Prism Break's story has to be one of my favorites. Not because it's particularly deep or anything, but I see it as kind of morbidly funny that he probably murdered tens of miners and then decided after taking a nap that he was good now and he was going to be this world's equivalent of a superhero. But with that out the way, I think this is where I'll end this video. Like always, hit the subscribe button if you enjoy content like this, share this around so I can grow the channel, leave some comments down below to make the algorithm happy, and like always, I will see you all in the next one.